adoption of the minutes from the last meeting in January. Um, anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts, omissions, corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, a motion. Barbara? So move. Accept the motion of uh, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Good start. <laughs> Uh, oh, second. A motion having been made by uh, Barbara Schenkel and seconded by Beth Richardson. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Motion carries 7 nothing. Next item on our agenda is a uh, Woodlands Assisted Living of Cape Elizabeth site plan. Uh, if the developer could step up to the microphone, introduce themselves, and present the project. Uh, this one is set for public hearings. Could I interrupt for sure. a moment? Sure. I just I know that there are members of the public who have sent in comments to the planning board and the town's uh, website where we use that Sorry. contact us feature has been suspended um, I just wanted everyone to know that they should continue sending emails either using that website or they can send them directly to me and anything I've received has been forwarded to the planning board so even if your email hasn't made it up onto that website as long as you heard something from me the board still got it Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Peter Bethanis. How are you doing? Um, what we want to do is exactly what um, Maureen's memorandum says. The uh, first item, the board should begin by having the applicant summarize any changes made to the plan since the last meeting. So I would, uh, if you would address your attention to Elliot Thayer's letter, January 29th. Summary of completeness, it has been revised. Starts out with uh, item number seven. Plans do not call for specific setback distances. However, the plans are drawn to scale and no new portion of the building appears to be within the setback. Um, the heavy letters uh, below that, setback distances have been added to the site plan. Peter, Peter, I'm not sure where you're reading from. What page are you on in the memo? I'm reading from... Oh, sorry. sorry. Continue, I'll, I'll find it. Okay. Um, uh, the setback distances have been added to the site plan, and you can uh, if you study the site plan that was sent in after uh, the last meeting. You will see those on there. Item number 13, the plan includes landscaping. plan does not include a plant list, but not, oh, I'm sorry. The plan, plans include landscaping plan. It doesn't make sense. But anyway, the landscaping plan has been revised to include specific species and plants. <coughs> and at 15, the landscaping plan refers to a four foot by nine foot illuminated facility sign, but no details of the sign have been submitted. The lighting for the sign is also not included in the lighting plan. And the answer is, and has been added to that, uh, the plans, the proposed illuminated facility sign is now detailed on the details plan. And the photometrics for the sign lighting is now included in the lighting plan. Reference is made to two attached spec sheets for the proposed sign lights. Item 16. As of this writing, the town manager is awaiting information to be provided to him by the applicant regarding a determination of financial completion, completeness. The board may wish to note that the deed transferring the property to the applicant also transferred outstanding financial obligations from the prior owner. And uh, the applicant is working with the town manager regarding a determination of financial completeness, and you now have a letter um, to that effect from uh, is it, uh, Bangor Savings. Juan, Bangor Savings. Is we did see that. Yes. yes. Yes, we have it. We have, we, we have that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, discussion. 
Beyond the level of completeness, the following items have been identified as possible issues for discussion. The police chief is recommending that the facility not use the Woodlands name. And uh, we have changed the name to um, hold on a second here. It's Evergreen Memory Care. You got it. So that's that's done. I say it's done, but it has to be all our drawings have to be changed to accommodate that. We haven't done that Go ahead. yet. Uh, unless you really want to do that, I don't think you need to revise your drawings. We haven't revised the drawings for no, that I, name. I'm, I'm saying that unless you really feel you want to do it, there's a proposed condition that would just require that the actual project be named that, not that you revise all the plans. You could actually put a note on your yeah. site plan that says the it, project shall be named. I, I would prefer to change the drawings. That way we have the, the actual name. It really is not a hard thing to do with the computer, so. So, so the idea, Maureen, would be if there is approval tonight um, between when we get the Mylar and uh, between then and when we get the Mylar, that we would get a whole new set of drawings? You know, I guess it's, it's uh, I'm trying to find the easiest way for the applicant to handle it, but if they want to take a more labor-intensive approach, I'm not going to tell them not to do that. That's fine. It's more the logistics of when we're going to, we are going to see it. In the typically, the board does not see plans after they've been approved. Well, just for signature. Yeah. Typically, the, the, the conditions have to be, you have to revise the plans to meet the conditions, and then um, you don't see a whole set of plans. All you see is the, the one plan that has to be recorded. Right. Okay. So it really doesn't matter to us. So that's fine. You can you can move on then. I just wanted I think the process to be clear to have here. The correct name on the drawings also. Okay. 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 Then we have some engineers' uh, comments on the elevator. Um, the fire chief is recommending that the existing elevator in the building be upgraded to an elevator is large enough to accommodate the rescue stretcher. And the answer to that is, is that the proposed upper level entrance to the facility will provide direct access of rescue personnel to the second floor patients, thereby eliminating the need for transportation, transporting patients between floors by elevators. Also, um, in that statement, it was uh, required a hydrant be shown uh, where the chief wanted it. So the hydrant is proposed adjacent to the sprinkler room um, where it is uh, easily accessible at the lower entrance driveway for access by the fire trucks. The project architect has numbered the rooms in the facility by floor and has shown these numbers on the project floor plans A103 through A106. Four. RP1 buffer construction within the RP1 buffer. Three new areas of paving are proposed for the parking lot, parking lot driveway, and air conditioning pad. These do not appear to be permit, permitted uses in the RP1 buffer. The applicant has eliminated the three new areas of paving and will relocate the proposed air conditioning unit pad out of the RP1 buffer. The floodplain. Um, I would like Mr. Thayer to speak about the floodplain. Uh, there has been an application put in uh, on the floodplains. Maybe Elliot, you can tell us where that's at at this point. Yes. Thank you, Elliot Thayer, an engineer on the project representing the applicant. Um, we have filed an application for letter of map amendment with federal emergency management. Um, Maureen has a copy of that application. We filed it about a month ago. Um, we based it on draft flood mapping, which hasn't been accepted yet, which does clearly show that this building is well above the 100-year flood. Um, so we're just waiting for that to be processed. And in your 
a draft approval, there is a condition um, that the planning board or the planner will receive that permit before the project proceeds. Thank you. Number six, south elevation. Some clarification may be needed for the roof deck structure. The building floor plans in south elevation indicate a framed-in room. As described by architect Peter Bethanis at the January 19, 2010 planning board meeting, the roof deck will be a courtyard and open above and surrounded by walls and windows. Ramp, number seven. The ramp that provides at grade access to the second floor also creates an eight foot high barrier in the middle of the site. Issues such as location of the hydrant, pedestrian circulation for people who park next to the south access road and snow storage will need to be addressed. An additional hydrant is proposed. See response to three above. Access to the facility from the 16 parking spaces next to the south access road will be provided by a designated route marked by painted 12 walks and paved walkways to the facility's lower entrance, all as shown on the site plan. The applicant proposes to remove snow from the ramp and elevated parking area by use of a combination of plows snow blowers and bucket loaders. Care will be taken such that snow removal procedures will not result in snow being displaced onto the lower level parking area or driveways. The full width of the ramp and the elevated parking area will be kept accessible. Okay, now the next set of questions and comments are, were generated by OEST Associates, engineers. Uh, number one, no comment requested. Number two, A, is actually uh, the same The same one that I just read above about plowing being removed, snow being removed. Uh, B is, has also been covered except for uh, one item. Um, there's a question about storm water and catch basins and we have an answer. Two catch basins will be provided at the bottom of the ramp to capture runoff from the ramp. And that is included in the grading and utilities plan. C, it appears that the catch basin schedule on the grading and utilities plan is missing catch basin number one. Catch basin number one is located on the plan within the raised parking lot. The applicant should add this basin to the schedule and include rim and invert information. The storm drain system for the site has been reconfigured and new schedules have been provided. See the grading and utilities plan and the response to D below. Okay, D, the applicant may consider adding another catch basin or manhole Peter, adjacent to... I think it might be helpful if you summarize some of these. I mean, we're on to page five of nine, and some of these are pretty technical engineering. Maybe we can summarize each one of these a little quicker than reading Make each one. Quicker. Well, I'm going to open it up to the board that if at any point actually, you have questions on yeah. each one, actually, feel all, free to jump in. All of these items have been corrected that we went over. Well, that's what the sense that I got. Is, is there any additional, other than the ones that are reflected in this letter, um, are there no. any, is there any other additional presentation that the board that the applicant wants to make to the board? Um, Uh, I have one. Okay. Um, there was a question about the deck. About the what? And the drainage of the second oh, the deck. floor deck. I didn't and know what you said. And removal from that deck. And the answer to that is, is that, yes, 
Um, we will be sloping the deck so that the water drains to a certain drain, the drains on the deck. And in the winter time, uh, it will not, snow will not be removed because it will be closed. Patients will not be out there. So that's it. Take care. Other than that, we have really answered all the questions from the previous. Uh, You're going to heat trace or do anything? You're not going to trap those drains or anything from that? What? Pardon me? You're going to heat trace them because uh, those drains are going to be above grade, I'm assuming, not heated, right? The drains that are in that, that system that is on that deck is a green roof, if you will. Is what, what roof? A green roof. There's yeah. four, four inches of sod. Okay. There's eight inches of stone. Yeah. And then there's a, an EPDM rubber gasket, if you will, under the whole thing that runs up the walls. Yeah. And the drains are down in that area. So what happens is the water goes through the side eventually and down through the stones and into those drains. But into pipes, right? Into pipes. And will the pipes be below grade or above grade? The pipes are heated by the, there's a space below it that's heated. Okay, so I wasn't sure. So it, that answers my they question. They never freeze. I was just curious. It doesn't make sure we didn't have any issues there. That's right, they never freeze. Perfect. Anything else? The applicant has nothing else to right now? Okay. Before I open the public hearing, does the board have any other questions on either the applicant's response to the concerns that were raised in the uh, January 29th letter? You could still ask them later. I just figured I'd put this issue out here now. Okay. If the applicant's all set, then what I'd like to do is open the public hearing and invite members of the public who want to <clears throat> ask any questions, make any comments. Tell us your thoughts concerning the Woodlands Assisted Living of Cape Elizabeth site plan. <laughs> Don't all rush up at once. <laughs> Sign up. <laughs> um, anyone else? Anyone wishing to speak concerning the, uh, the pending Woodlands Assisted Living of Cape Elizabeth site plan? <clears throat> Third call, hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. And open up the floor to comments from planning board members or questions, thoughts, suggestions. Barbara? Well, I have one thing. It's really not a question for the applicant. I think one of the, one of the concerns has been the snow removal. And I, for one, would like to see it added to, this, to the uh, site plan, how their, you know, their proposal for removing snow, because it becomes they would probably regard it as, everybody would regard it as very important if it was on the site plan and everybody could see it. Meaning uh, the ramp. The the, well, how to clear the ramp and they've reiterated the methods they're going to use, but you know, probably something as simple as the methods of snow removal shall be added to the plans or something like that. I don't know, that. I think that is more of an operational thing. I don't think it's necessary. You don't think so? That's my uh, Okay. I I agree. I wouldn't want to tell them how to remove the snow. And I'm guessing that there's a safety code that they have to adhere to in terms of removing the snow from walkways. Is that true, Maureen? Um, Did you hear that question? And that there's no. not. And but what they I, mean, may I, could, I could agree to say uh, instructions that snow shall be removed from these areas, but I wouldn't want to tell them where to put it. Well, I, that's not what I... Yeah. I, I only had a one... Methods of snow removal shall be added to the, oh, I said methods. Requirements of snow removal shall be added to the plans. Oh, they may that do it required. first time. They may not like how they do it, and they'll do it different the second time until they get it done. But not how they're going to do it. see that more as a handcuff. Just yeah. that it, it's got to be done. Well, they'll, yeah. That'll be pretty obvious. They won't be able to use the ramp unless they do. Yeah. Right? The town engineer does recommend, though, um, in his letter, as one of the uh, notes that he requests be added, that the site plan state that the snow, the state the anticipated snow removal operations, and that the ramp will be kept clear. So I think we do have a recommendation that there be at least some type of a note to that effect in our letter from Steve Maybe Harding. it'd be as simple as okay. that, just kept clear. I missed that, because I did go back to the letter, and I didn't, in the last two minutes. That's fine. 
And I think I think that's a good that's idea. That's sufficient. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? My other comment was I know our proposed um, resol resolution here incorporates generally this letter from Steve Harding. But as I read through this letter, there is a mixture of requirements, a note should be added, and suggestions talking about, well, I think it might be a good idea if we had HDPE pipe rather than PVC pipe. And to me, it's confusing if we simply incorporate this letter, what things we are requiring to appear and be changed, and what things we're continuing to leave at the discretion of the applicant. Because I think the letter itself is somewhat unclear as to the mandatory nature of a number of the things on it. So I think perhaps before we have a motion, we might want to take a look at those if there are some things that we don't consider mandatory, such as the type of piping. And there's one place where he recommends a 12-inch pipe. But my sense is perhaps we're not requiring a 12-inch pipe, but I'm not quite sure. I think that's a good idea to be more specific. Maureen, you may have a better idea as to what the, Steve Harding's intention is. Um, or the applicant may have accepted some of these and intending not to accept, so maybe that's what we should ask first. We didn't. If, if I had continued on with the list that I was reading, you would see that all of those items that he recommended have been incorporated into our documents. The 12-inch pipe, the type no. of pipe, and everything. If, Peter, have if you could just, that. if you could Might step up helpful. to the podium. Yeah. If, if, if you could just go, since the proposal yes, is to incorporate this specific letter, if you could go through this letter um, rather than the, than the Thayer letter and, and tell us what you intend to do and what you have a concern about. Okay, yes, this is um, in response to the letter um, dated February 9th. Right. from Stephen Harding. Um, we've gone through these and I can address each one. Um, many of these are just statements regarding the project that we are fine with. At the bottom of page one, um, 2A, which was the snow removal you were just discussing, um, we will add a note to the site plan stating the anticipated snow removal operations and that the ramp will be kept clear of plowed snow for its full width. On the second page, at the top, B, um, we will add a sidewalk to the parking area to the north of the building entrance. Um, that will run that full length of those few parking spaces uh, parallel to Scott Dyer Road, but against the, the building side of the parking lot. Um, so that sidewalk will be added, a paved sidewalk. Uh, 2C at the top of page 2. Um, we will change pipe sizes to a minimum of 12 inch. And um, Stephen Harding's comment was that even though it's not required, which we agree, we did the stormwater analysis for maintenance, um, at times, a 12-inch pipe can be easier to maintain than a 10-inch or an 8-inch, so we'll modify those to 12-inch pipes. And also, um, the, the type of pipe, we've got designated PVC. Um, HDPE is fine. Um, it seems that at times, depending on what municipality we're working with, there's a, a preference. But as far as we're concerned, either one is OK. So we'll go with what Steve Harding recommends on that. Uh, number three toward the bottom of that page, um, as far as the emergency access, um, driving under and past the proposed canopy, those, that canopy has been eliminated, which is shown on your new architectural plans. Uh, number four, uh, Peter and I already talked or referred to this. Um, that existing gravel filing on the west side of the building, that is adequate. And I did receive today a letter from the geotechnical engineer. Peter had him forward it to me along with boring information. Um, we will submit that. It shows that that gravel base is adequate. 
and we just didn't bring, or I didn't bring copies of that tonight, but we'll submit showing that. Um, so those are the, the comments that Stephen Hardy made. Thank you, that's very helpful. Yes. Anyone else? How do we, what have we done in the past with uh, this floodplain? Is that how long is that going to take to get approved? And uh, I mean, we give approval, they want to start digging, but we say, wait, we don't have the floodplain issue resolved. <laughs> <laughs> Offered the applicant a quicker alternative. This is what they chose. We did? Yes, we did. Oh. Discussed it last month. They insisted no, I, I on going with this approach. Refresh my memory. Which, yeah, I, well. they, they insisted they wanted to go in this approach. Okay. We, had, we gave them an option. We're clean up the plans right now, and they did not want to go that route. They wanted to go with this, pursuing the map amendment. Okay. Do we have any guesstimate as to how long he was going to take? <laughs> I guess that's a no. <laughs> And what's the applicant proposing if FEMA doesn't accept it? I mean, because I'm, my inclination, Jim, is to move forward. Yeah, I but agree. But it's got to be the applicant's risk that if they start turning dirt and somehow there's a problem, not the town's problem, it's the going to be the applicant's problem. So, and and well, we do oh, understand, uh, we understand that. Um, the, the issue is, you know, that the current flood maps show the south end of that building within the shaded area of a 100-year flood right. zone. So by definition, it's in a flood zone. And the only way to get it out, where we've now shown that it is above this draft 100-year flood elevation, is to file this LOMA, the Letter of Map Amendment, and we've done that. Um, so they've had it for a month. Um, yeah, we, clueless is how long it takes to get it approved. I have no idea. Uh, typically, it, it can be within a week. Um, the, the issue here, or the, the difference on this one, is these new flood maps are the draft maps. So they haven't technically been accepted yet, at least as far as this elevation information is concerned. We believe it's accurate. I think that's why it's taking longer than it normally would. Uh, but we don't know. Um, I left a voice message today and sent an email to the person we're working with, and I was hoping to have some kind of an answer tonight on a time frame, but I haven't received a response yet. So we know that it has to be removed from the flood zone um, to do what Lon Walters is proposing, and that's just in process. Okay. Any other? Beth? Yeah, we're ready for a motion. I was going to ask well, one more time. Are yeah, there any I other just, questions? Did the town manager recommend the applicant has financial capability to complete I, that? Yeah. No. He hasn't. He did not. That was we got something from the bank. Is that I wanted to confirm that the town manager has not recommended that the applicant has the financial yes. capability for this project. That's correct. Okay. Meaning it just hasn't come back, right? Meaning we have heard nothing from the manager. Right, right. In other words, but the way Victoria said it is, he's not saying they don't have it. He just hasn't responded yet. Is that right? Is that the same thing? Yes. He, if he affirmatively said they can't do it, we've got a problem. If he just hasn't responded yet, we can make it as a condition that he has to still make that determination. Well, Before, well go ahead. I really don't think that you can delegate that responsibility to any other entity. Because we're waiting for him to respond to us. It's, it's the, the final arbiter of who has financial capability is the planning board. Right. And I worry that you are illegally delegating your authority through conditions of approval. So you can have specific conditions of approval, but to make findings of fact as a condition of approval, I think may be going too far. What's the hold up? We have he received it. He's made no other comment. I am not privy to the conversations he's had with the applicant. Last month, 
you know, it was you need to talk to the applicant. You, the applicant needs to talk to the manager. So, Maureen, typically the board would not make a decision based solely on the letter that was emailed to us this afternoon. That would be in unusual the, for us to do that. In the past, you have done it. More recently, there's been a little bit more caution. Was Mike just not in this afternoon, or is He's it? He's received it. Okay. All right. Anyone else but noticed it just came that in today? It's the he, letter he got um, at the same time he got the one for another item that's on the agenda. So I, I just don't know where he is with it. And I'd make note that the letter um, says that they are able to do a 62 room facility. And I don't believe that's what's in front of us. It's a 72 bed. And there's over 80 rooms. So, Maureen, if this is a finding of fact that we would need to make in order to proceed with an approval, and if we want to have the input from the town manager on this point, then is the only option we have to table it pending a response from the town manager on that point? No, we, we can make the finding off the letter. The question is, do we want to do that or not? No, that's, that's what I'm saying. If, if we want the town manager's input, then I think what you're recommending is there's really no motion that we could approve other than a motion to table. It's interesting that Bangor, the bank would specifically put 62 rooms. How many res may I ask a question? How many residential rooms are there? I was just going to count them. There's 72 oh, or 73. There's 72 patients. Beds. 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 But they're not, that doesn't mean there's 72 rooms. There's over 80. There's well, you, you don't, I mean, by rooms, they usually mean the residential rooms, not the other rooms. How many rooms? 62. See, that's yeah. exactly what the bank right. means. Okay. More than one bed in some rooms, actually. Yeah, there are two beds in some, some rooms. Some rooms oh, but you beds. don't count the kitchen and the living room. Right. You only count yeah. residential rooms. And that's if there's correct. 62 of them, the letter reflects correctly. Okay. Uh, I'm counts. comfortable with the letter. I also uh, look back to the purpose of this determination. I mean, the first issue I want to raise is this thing was bought out of a bankruptcy foreclosure from a project that we approved yeah. <laughs> as having financial capability uh, before. So that doesn't insulate it from financial no. issues. No. Uh, the second issue is that I want to remind the board is there is a bonding requirement. In other words, this has to be funded to the town's satisfaction so that we're, we're not stuck with a half-finished project. Uh, that doesn't, again, stop any applicant from potentially running into problems or completing the project. So um, I, I, I think this has a limited efficacy in Given what that is, I have no trouble approving it at this point. No, I have no trouble either. I think it's unfortunate that the town manager didn't address it, especially if he got it the same time he got the letter for the other but project. But it's the day of. I mean, that's not fair. I, mean, this I know, been, but... This could have been sent in three weeks ago. True, I realize, but one was turned around and one wasn't. And they both well, seem... So many hours in the day. I know. The day of. You know, <laughs> wouldn't hurt. But the, in my opinion, it was detailed enough. I felt comfortable. I mean, does Mike have access to other information that would make him disagree well, I think with? He would have returned a negative to us. See, th yeah. that's, that's that's the hardest. That's why I'm hesitating. I don't know. I don't know if there were other pieces of information he was looking for in the letter that didn't come in this letter. Just don't know. Sure. I actually find it a little troubling that he got two letters on the same day and responded only to one. That's my question. That's, that's what, I'm, what I really am wondering about. So I guess I'm, I'm concerned about we have only one thing in, in front of us, and it's, to me, it's a bit troubling. The circumstances are a little bit troubling, and unfortunately, he's not here for us to be able to ask the question. I know, and, and the reason I, I wonder about the town manager response is that not to compare one project to the other, but the letters, the, the one we got a response on, 
in my opinion, was less detailed than the one that was received for this particular project. So. It's, still, it's still an LLC. I mean, this is a limited liability vehicle. It's true. No, I agree. It doesn't. I agree. It has limited protections for the town. The bonding requirement is what protects the town's true. interest. And they have to post that for public parts of the project before they, they get their building permit. So I, I, I don't see that as a reason to hold it up under these circumstances. Yes, do I? I mean, I certainly share some hesitation. But um, I, if that's the only thing holding up approval, I'd say go forward anyway. If there are other issues, I'd say, well, we're coming back for other issues, but I don't see it. Does the board have any other questions or? or I'm not trying to limit discussion or debate here. I'm just trying to narrow the issues. No, I, I think that's appropriate. I have a motion for the board to consider. Go ahead. Uh, finding of facts. One, Woodlands Assisted Living of Cape Elizabeth LLC is proposing to redevelop a vacant facility located at 126 Scott Dyer Road to a 72-bed assisted living facility, which requires review under Section 19-9 Site Plan Review. Two, the town engineer is recommending revisions to the plan. Three, the town public safety personnel have stated that public safety may be compromised if the proposed facility uses a name similar to an existing apartment complex called Woodlands. Four, the plans indicate that existing and new buildings will be located in the 100-year floodplain without evidence of flood proofing. And five, this application substantially complies with section 19-9-5 site plan standards. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the applications of, application of Woodlands Assisted Living of Cape Elizabeth LLC for site plan review of the redevelopment of the vacant facility located at 126 Scott Dyer Road to a 72-bed assisted living facility be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised per the town engineer's letter dated February 9, 2010. Two, that the project be renamed Evergreen Memory Care. Three, that a floodplain map amendment be obtained indicating that no existing or proposed building is located in the 100-year floodplain and that the site plans be revised to show the new floodplain location. And four, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the above conditions have been met and revised plans submitted to the town planner to confirm compliance with the conditions. Motion having been made. Any seconds? Second. Barbara. Motion having been made by Beth Richardson and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Do we have any discussion on the motion? I just have one quick question. The discussion we had about the snow removal is part of the town's letter, so it's incorporated. Just I want the record to clearly reflect that. Good. That's what I assumed. Okay. Yep. Um, that's my only discussion on the motion. Any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. All those opposed to the motion, motion carries seven up. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to wish you good luck because it'll be a pleasure to see that building used for a good purpose again. And I want to thank you for your willingness to change the name of the facility too. <laughs> Uh, the next item we have on the agenda is the Hannaford Field Concession Stand Site Plan Amendment. What it is on for tonight is uh, the issue of completeness. Step up, introduce themselves. There we go. My name is Tom Greer from Pickham and Greer. We're the engineer for the project. We've been uh, involved with the boosters, uh, doing several things. Um, what I have on the on the screen up here is a um, half of the field, which you can see to the right. Uh, the bleachers that were recently installed are in yellow. The parking lot is obviously on the left, and the boosters are looking to build 
a concession stand that is shown in red, and in front of the concession stand is in yellow is a um, crushed gravel pad that we'll be using in front of it, which will address one of the comments. Uh, the boosters have been um, providing concessions at games over the last year or so. Um, roughly 20 of them a year is what's planned. Uh, currently, they've been working out of tents and tarps and tables that they bring in and move out. What they're looking to do is to put a building in this location that will allow them more efficient use of that area so that they can store their tables and get a little bit in out of the weather and make that work a little bit better. Um, and that, that allows them to, um, again, provide concessions at, at roughly 20 games a year. Um, this building is located in an area on the site that is far enough away from the bleaches that extending the power over to it is a big deal. Um, in talking with Bob, Bob Malley, the power is limited to what's on the, on the bleaches now and that to extend it would be, would be prohibitive. The, this building is, from the boosters' point of view, is a temporary building while they continue to do some fundraising and can build what they would consider to be a more elaborate concession stand that would have full power, full amenities that you might expect in it. Um, that's going to take a while, and so in the meantime, what they would like to do is put this in its place and continue to operate it. Once the concession stand's funding is, is raised for the, for the alternate concession stand, then they'll be back before you with a, with a different plan, obviously, for that, for that approval. Uh, in the meantime, what they would like to do is operate this facility using a generator and um, um, get in out of the rain a little bit with their equipment and make that a little bit more efficient. Um, we have also shown some grading. It's a little bit hard to see at this scale, but uh, um, one of the comments from Steve Harding was, was to add some grading in the finished floor. That has been added to the drawings and um, shown so that, that you can have a, a relatively flat area in front of them where the crushed stone is going to be. So when you're standing there buying something, you can, you, you'll be on crushed gravel versus where well, that area would typically turn to mud if it was just topsoil that was, was there. Um, we also have some elevation views that we've prepared for the building, which we need some help to find. Okay, Maureen, how do I get to the next drawing? Go up to the upper corner and hit the red button. Other corner. Red uh, there we go. You can rotate. And we can rotate it, which would be uh, go up to the top. One of these? No, all the way up, I think, under view. All the way to the top menu. Here. Under view. Yeah. done this before with this one. So. Well, the touchpad's a little hard, too. It's different. I'm used to using a mouse, for sure. Um, anyway, here's, here's what we've put together for elevation views of the building. It's relatively simple. It's 16 by 10. Uh, we have a door on one end that allows them to come in through the gates and then bring whatever equipment they need to bring into the building into the, to the end of it. Um, we have a window in the front that allows them to sell concessions through it. Uh, we've extended the roof out a little bit in a chevron pattern on the front so that when you're standing in front of the building there's a little bit more rain cover. Um, football games are played whenever they're played and, and out of the rain helps. Um, it's a relatively simple building. We're looking to put on vinyl siding that's uh, got a, a uh, shaker pattern to it so it's a little bit dressed up than, than just plain Jane. Um, and it'll, it'll sit just above the existing ground. So it's a pretty simple 
structure that we're looking to build. Um, with those items, I think I've addressed most of the comments that were, were put forth. Um, we are not going to provide water and sewer to this. They haven't had that, that requirement to date. Uh, they have hand sanitizers that they use as part of the food prep and, and, and the like. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Obviously, from the Brewster's point of view, um, they would like to get going on this as quickly as possible. They have raised the cash to do it. Uh, they have a contractor lined up and ready to go and would like to be there at the start of the spring sports that uh, they would be on site and, and going. Um, so an approval tonight would be obviously very much appreciated. Where's the permanent one going to go, do you know? Probably in this location. Same place. Uh, it depends on how big it gets and how fancy it gets. Yeah. Uh, we did one in Gorham where there were a fair number of uh, toilet facilities added to it, and it got to be a fairly good-sized building. Um, if that's the case, it might have to go down the other end of the field where, yeah. where it currently is in order to just to fit in and make that work. And this will all be demoed then when you... Excuse me? You're going to be... De you'll, you'll demo this when it comes time yes. to the... Yes. Uh, we'll probably... Uh, we've left it the way it's will be framed is you can just pick it up and move it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll pick it up and move it if, if it goes in this same location. Right. So, so getting power and water to this location is not necessarily the easiest thing on the site without right. a no, big agree. expense. So yeah. by the time we get to the adding all of those type of things, a, a different location may be easier yeah. to be fundraising for. Yeah, close to the school. Uh, school color siding? We can do that. <laughs> that hasn't been <laughs> no, maybe that maybe not be pretty. Yeah. <laughs> set? Yeah, set, sorry. Barbara. Well, we did have one comment about um, trash, trash, trash removal, and I know this that that they're not permanent. But are you planning to have sufficient garbage cans around to remove trash? They'll have garbage cans around the concession stand for, for those type of things, and the boosters will pick up any of the trash that's, that's obviously associated with them. The hard part with trash, as you could hear, you saw from the letter from Judy, was that um, it blows. And it blows, and it can be dropped anywhere. It can be dropped anywhere. So um, they will try to pick up and clean up, and that will be noted. Okay, and there, are, there is no loudspeaker, of course, or anything like that. That was also part of the letter yeah, about noise. The boosters have no control over what the athletes No, no, I do. know, but there's but, nothing but no, they, itself. They just to assure the, the person who wrote nope. the letter that that's not part Two of the letter. $2 hot dogs won't be advertised on the it's loudspeaker. Fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> so on the trash, will the boosters take away the trash, or will the town take away the trash? Do you normally take it out? We usually bring it off over to the uh, school and leave it with the other trash that the school takes care of at that point. We saw bottles and cans and Jeff Thorak is very, very diligent about getting on this and we don't. We've even gone back and cleaned up the bleaches after the concessions are sold. Great, thank you. I, I have a question about um, the plans to use a generator. Yeah. Um, those can be pretty noisy. And I know there were some neighbors that were concerned about the noise. Um, Maureen, is there a noise ordinance here that might govern a generator being turned on? I, I know it would annoy me. Your site plan regulations have noise restrictions. So in order to demonstrate that you've met the noise restrictions, you would require the applicant to hire an audiologist or whoever's an expert at that to calculate the, the sound, the decibel level at the property line. You're going to put the generator probably right behind the right building, behind though? It. That's what I anticipate. Which is on the opposite side of where the residents are. That's right. Residents are. It would go right behind it and, and connect in that way. I think the crowd noise is going to be much... I was going to say, yeah. for the events... Yeah, the, the crowd noise, noise... You'll, you'll never hear that generator. You think? Not trying to minimize it. Yeah, no, I, no. Just, I, I was if, wondering the same thing I, yeah. as I was if it, if reading it, the information. If it, the, if it was the generator all by itself right. and not, the, not the, the athletic competition there as well, then you might be able to pick it out and it would, you would be able to hear it. Mm -hmm. But I think with the rest of the crowd noise and all of that, it's only all going to be operated while they're, while they're obviously um, actively selling concessions and that type of thing. I, I don't think that will become a problem. Okay. No more than the noise from the crowd. No. All right, and then I have one last question. So um, our notes here say that the site plan shows it currently shows a concession plan, um, concession stand to the south bleachers and I think I see that on my plan here. Yes. Is so um, 
Are you proposed? So, the, and is there a concession stand right there now? Is, is the one down there now? No. no. So, were you proposing to replace that one with this one, or, or yes. are you going to leave the other one? Yes. On. We'll, re we'll replace that. One. Okay. So. That that may be the permanent home mm -hmm. in the future, but right now that's. So then, can we expect that you would submit plans that oh, would yeah. not have this concession stand I, on I it, and then it would? My plans don't have. I need these elevations. Yeah, I need to I need to resubmit this this okay. sheet here that you yeah. see here plus the site plan you just saw because that has some additional information on it as well. Okay. We'll submit that back to the town staff. Okay. Leslie, you all set? Yep. We've got a motion for the board to consider. Are we? Or is it just uh, just for the record? I, I have one. Um, could you could you identify yourself for the record for her own? You can. You were going to ask me afterwards, I know. I know who he is, but <laughs> go ahead. My name is Alan Tebow, and I am a representative of the soccer boosters, and I've been working with the other booster organizations to bring this forward, and we really appreciate you considering this. It will help our fundraising activities in this uh, economic time. We're going to be strapped uh, even harder as the school budget gets cut to bring forward uh, additional funds to support the teams when they might not get supported by the school, so it would be greatly appreciated if... We can move this forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? The applicant, Jim, you have a motion for us. It be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth to amend the existing site plan approval for the school campus in Hanover Field to add a concession stand be tabled to the March 16, 2010 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing will be held. I actually was thinking we would move, that? Move, a, a move approval forward. We do not have to have a public hearing on this. Oh. We can if we want. No. I, Does anybody want to bring this forward? I misunderstood. To a public? No, it's okay. No, I don't see anything. Right. You're right. So no, and, and, and delay my last. Well, that's up to you, Jim. <laughs> that was just a drill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We can second it and it's, vote on it. It's your motion, but, but I was. No. I, I actually want. I'm running on empty, all right? I <laughs> Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth to amend the existing site plan approval for the school campus in Hannaford Field to add a concession stand be approved. I second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> the second, second motion? Sec I'm seconding the second motion. Okay. It, it, it uses the word approved at the end. The one that says approved at the end. And I, I, I would like to ask Jim and... and Beth to amend that. We just we do need those amended plans. Yes. So subject to the amended plans being submitted, um, I would if no. you're if it's okay with you, yes. I'd like to absolutely. Okay. Second. Absolutely. Second. Okay. Yeah. A motion having you all set. Would you please Could say it properly for a Romy? Sure. Well, based on the condition that the uh, site plans be amended to eliminate. Yeah, what's it? <laughs> right. Was that building drawing we don't have? It show the out plant. They show the elevations, the existing um, concession stand, the original location of the concession stand be removed. Yeah, I think that was it. I think no, and the, and oh. the um, the building elevations. Yeah, I did. Say, I, said said that. I said that. Okay. Are you all set, Romy? Okay. <laughs> let's, go to, let's go to the videotape. Okay. A motion having been made, seconded, and amended. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? All those opposed to the motion? Motion carries 7 nothing. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah, next item on the agenda tonight. Uh, Rudy's of the Cape restaurant site plan. Um, and I'm going to read this in full. Two Lights General Store LLC is requesting site plan review for an 80 seat restaurant and convenience store located at the existing Rudy's establishment at 517 Ocean House Road, section 19 9 site plan. And this is on for completeness tonight. No public hearing. There is no public hearing scheduled for tonight. Uh, Peter, I just want to mention for full disclosure, 
that uh, Patrick, Carol, and I are neighbors. Is that it? Anyone? That's it. I, don't no. I, I do not see that as a bar to having you objectively considered this. Do you? No, no. I do not. Okay. No. Anybody I walk my dog with him sometimes okay. at Fort Williams. <laughs> and you be objective. Yeah. So. Presenting engineer, architect. Um, yeah, my name is Pat Carroll. I'm a landscape architect. Landscape architect landscape. is a neighbor. Of, and she, in the interest of full disclosure, she's uh, letting the board know that and is going to continue on believing that she can objectively review the application. I have no trouble with that. Okay. We're all neighbors. Anyone else on the board want to make anything? You know, I have been known to have a glass of wine at Rudy's in the past. But I, <laughs> but I have had not had one tonight, and I can be objective. Okay. <laughs> I've actually walked my dog with Liza. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If the applicant could uh, introduce themselves and make their presentation, we'll consider the completeness. Um, my name is Patrick Carroll. I'm with Carroll Associates, and I'm, I've been working with Mary for... Oh, probably two and a half years now on this project, and uh, we we made an application back in 2008, and um, got caught up in all the, the new BA zone district uh, <coughs> reconfiguration, and um, and so we kind of put things on hold, and now we're back. So um, I'm going to just briefly run you through the through the project as to what we're proposing here, if I can make this work. I can tell you we're working on it late in the afternoon. How can you tell that? Oh, I'm sorry. One, two, here we go. You okay now? We are getting fancy now. So this is, this is the site, and I'm sure everybody on the board and in town has probably been there and... Um, at least driven by there many, many times. It's been there for quite a few years. Um, the current site is um, is pretty much all the gray that you see there. And I'll use the pointer here. This is all this is all a gravel parking and driveway that extends all the way back around the back of the of the existing Rudy's and and then out. This is gravel here. There's a paved area that's about in here. Um, there's a total here, and I'm trying to, I think it's about a um, total amount of impervious cover existing is, um, it's about 50,000, I'm sorry, it's about 21,000, a little over 21,000 square feet of impervious cover that currently exists. And that includes the existing building, which is about 2,600 square feet. Uh, paved parking area is about 4,800. The gravel parking area is about 13,000. And then there's a small little um, outdoor dining area, which is kind of a uh, covered uh, shade arbor and um, and then some utility pads so there's about 42 percent of the site with the, the entire site is a little over an acre 1.1 acres and it's about 42 percent of the site that's currently um, impervious cover a couple of other things that I wanted to show on this on this existing conditions plan this line right here is, is actually the uh, the BA zone. It's the line between the BA zone and the residential zone. And the new regulations and the new zoning ordinance talks about um, a hundred foot setback in order to to provide, uh, in order to to take advantage of a 10 o'clock closing. So that this red line that you see right here is a hundred foot setback from that residential zone. The blue line is the property line. The, the inner blue line here is, is, a, uh, is a setback, and I think it's 10 feet on the back side, or five feet on the back, 10 feet along um, Route 77. And as you get over here, 
we've got a, a setback for the RP2 zone that comes in down through here. So there's a fairly tight building window here um, of which any expansion can really occur. And we are trying to take advantage of, of the benefit, the one hour benefit by, by removing any development that's within that 100 foot zone to the, to the neighbor. So now if I can, um, I don't know how to do this. Go to the uh, proposed site plan, you'll see that 100 foot line runs right down through here. What we're proposing to do is to remove all the pavement uh, that's currently, it's one large curb cut along Route 77. We're going to remove that and, and direct the circulation and the parking to two distinct curb cuts that would be spaced out approximately 150 feet apart from, from each other. So access would come in here. This is also de designed to be a one-way circulation through here. So all access will come in through this driveway here. There'll be a small number of parking spaces on this side, um, a handicapped space here. The front entrance will still remain in the front where it currently does. But the majority of the parking and the outdoor dining area is all located on the south side of the building uh, as far away from the residential neighborhood and impact on the, on the residential neighbors as we can, as we can potentially make it. And um, with, the, with the outdoor dining located here where it takes advantage of good solar exposure. There's a small addition in the back here and I'll go through kind of the floor plans and elevations in a little bit here. But uh, we're, we're, we're designing this such that uh, there's a total of 25 parking spaces that will accommodate 80 seats and five staff by, by code. Um, we're also including a sidewalk connection that's part of the uh, part of the new zone uh, regulations that uh, there's a sidewalk connection along the property line that would connect um, Davis Point Road and then down to the south ultimately uh, that would be extended down past the good table and, and on down to Jordan's. So it's a pretty simple site plan and we think that given the fact that that we're pulling the majority of the of the active parking and active use of the of the site to the south side we're really working pretty hard to try to buffer uh, those activities from the from the residential neighbors. This area to the right uh, that within that 100 foot zone will remain a green zone. Um, I'll show you in a few minutes here what the landscaping is doing there, but in a sense, in essence, what we're doing is, is really buffering those neighbors even more uh, with uh, fairly dense evergreen and uh, deciduous shrubs and plantings. Uh, that area will also be utilized as a snow storage area when they're plowing the, the uh, parking lot. Uh, they'll push snow into that and we've got some drainage that, that collects that any water that gets in there and, and takes it on around. So with this new configuration we've actually reduced the amount of impervious cover on the site. We're, we are at 41% uh, impervious uh, with this plan or about uh, 20,754 square feet. So. I think you know it's really works in a, in a number of different ways. It it cleans up the circulation along Route 77, uh, where you t where you currently have cars pulling in and out and a big wide expanse of uh, of pavement. We've cleaned that all up. Uh, it presents the front of the building very very nicely to Route 77, and I think it'll be an attractive uh, building and and amenity for the for this part of the town. Um, and I think the circulation, the way the circulation works, it, it really brings people in and around and back out onto Route 77 in a very safe way. This is a grading and drainage plan, and I just wanted to include this and just briefly run you through what's happening here. But you can see some of these proposed contours in this area 
and coming out onto here. The, the way the grading works is there's kind of a high point in the site right through here, and all of this, all of this area in here actually drains uh, over into this green space. And the remaining portion of the site drains around and comes out down into, into this area down in here. And uh, this all sheet drains off in this direction. That's not a problem. Over here, we've created kind of a small uh, basin area that, that will collect water. A culvert underneath the sidewalk to a, to a small basin here. This, this is really part of a ditch system that runs, that will run all the way along the front of the, front of the building and down. And so any of this water gets collected, any water coming off of Route 77, and any water from this parking lot really gets channelized down through here and then discharged back into this larger wetland area over here through a uh, riprap level spreader. And we've had, uh, as part of the application, there is a stormwater management report and erosion control plan that was, that was submitted that was done by Steve Blaze of Blaze Civil Engineering. And I think it was reviewed by Steve Harding and um, found to be appropriate for this uh, for this site. Uh, how's that being collected? Yeah, let me go back. I don't know, this area in here. Well, the other side. Okay, it's coming down through here and it's coming down in swale in between the sidewalk and and the road. It comes down through here. There's a culvert here. And then currently that ditch continues on down past the good table. We're putting a small little berm in here and it's going to collect it and then there's another pipe that discharges it back over into this, this area here. I can, I can maybe enlarge this for you if you want. Well, I'm trying to figure out where the water is coming from into that swell. Off the parking lot? And off the road. Is, that, is that better? That's existing. Well, there isn't, you know, it's funny, the road is actually cross-sloped towards, towards the uh, east, and there's actually a series of catch basins on this side of the road. Uh, so, there, so, so there's not much road runoff that's actually getting into this ditch. Most of this is really handling uh, the runoff from this site itself. So again, there's a high point here. This parking lot here is draining in this direction. In fact, right now, this all drains off into here, and there's, there's actually a low point where water just kind of ponds back in this corner. Um, and what we're going to, doing is regrading this such that we can take care of that low spot back in there. So that'll all drain out to here, um, and then this will drain through a culvert, another culvert, a ditch, a culvert, and then another culvert that drops it into this level spreader back here. And the, from there, it just kind of, it'll just work its way out through this uh, existing low area. Treatment though, it's in that area? A little bit of... Uh... Well, they'll be treated, I mean, these aren't, actually haven't been designed as bioswales or uh, they would just be grass line swales. Um, but uh, I'm not sure there's any treatment that's required. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. This is the landscape plan landscape and lighting. Um, one of the things we're doing, we're planting a series of street trees along Route 77 here. There'll be six, I think they're, they're maples that run down along here. Uh, there's one existing tree here that was part of uh, Engel's project. I think there's another one back there that wasn't rendered. But majority of the planting is really doing two things. One is, is reinforcing this landscape buffer zone here. Uh, between the neighbors and uh, and the and Rudy's, and this is a series of staggered evergreen trees that tends to wrap around the corner here, and then as a foreground understory on the uh, Rudy's side of that, uh, there's a the massing of Rugosa rose that wraps down through here. So 
So we get a lawn area in the middle and then kind of a, a layered effect of kind of an understory shrub material and, uh, and evergreen trees in the back. Uh, some flowering trees in here, evergreen trees. And then, and then this planting in here is really um, done to help reinforce the, ex the existing planting. There was some planting that uh, uh, the Two Lights Business Center kind of did along their property line, and this is just designed to reinforce that. And then again over here we've got some, some evergreen trees to, to begin to screen and buffer this parking area from, these, from the residential and business uses here. And uh, this is the outdoor dining area. And we've got a couple of shade trees here that are located on the south side so that uh, they'll cast some, some shade there in the, uh, in the late afternoon. So it's, it's really the, the majority of the planting is really done in an effort to really minimize and uh, mitigate this use to the neighbors, to the residential neighbors. We've also got a series of, uh, this plan also shows lighting. And um, I know there was in Maureen's memo, there was an indication that we, we hadn't submitted yet the uh, um, photometric plan. I do have copies of that tonight. I can uh, pass around here. Um, lighting plan is pretty simple. It's it's uh, three pole lights, one at one at each entrance here, and then one in the in the rear that would light up this area. These two would would light basically light these entrances. Uh, there's a couple of uh, building mounted lights in the in the back and rear that are really meant as much as anything for security. Uh, and, and then some building mounted lights at the front entrance and building mounted lights on the uh, outdoor dining area. And the photometric plan does indicate, I think in the package there was all the fixtures and um, wattages and lamps and, and all the, basically the product information was included but not the photometrics. But if you look at the photometrics you can see that it, it really, these are, these are um, state-of-the-art kind of sharp cutoff type fixtures and they, uh, you can see by the photometrics that you don't have to get very far away from those fixtures and the light levels drop right off to just about nothing. So we think that uh, you know, it's going to be an improvement over what's there from a lighting point of view. It's going to be a safe area uh, for, for customers and um, it should not spill any light off onto, onto neighboring properties. Can I ask you, is the entire gray area there gravel, or is there some pavement? Um, hold on, let me go back to that. This gray area here? Yes. Yes, that's all gray. At this point, it's going to be gravel. The drive and all the, par the entire yes. parking area? Yes. Okay, thank you. And I know we've, Maureen and I have talked a little bit about how to, how to designate those spaces, and we may end up putting some curb stops or something in there to kind of try to designate a lot, that a little bit better. I should point out, and it's not so, it's, it's hard on these uh, without really kind of. On the right hand side. Right hand side. There, we go. Um, there is a guardrail proposed here and here. Uh, on this side, it's because it really starts to drop down into this low area, and we don't want cars rolling off here. On here, it's really to prevent cars from kind of, you know, jamming up, creeping out into that into that lawn area. So that's right at the 100-foot line, and um, we think that it'll it'll actually help define the parking, and uh, it'll help protect this lawn area from from getting pretty beat up. That well, would, you get snow over that. You, you can get snow over that. Yeah, the yeah. guardrail will be fairly low, and they can plow snow up and over it. Yeah. That's wood proposed? Yeah. So, I have a question about the parking. Sure. Um, I, right now, my observation has been that there's a higher percentage of sort of large commercial trucks mm -hmm. there than you would normally see at most places in town. Um, is there enough parking for five big trucks? So will they fit in that? Yeah, lot? the way and um, park. I wish there was a 
a pretty easier way to blow this up. But um, no, it's probably mm -hmm. good. Um, the way this is this designed, it was originally designed for two-way traffic, so we've really got a 24-foot aisle to begin with. And with one-way traffic, you really don't need that, that extra width. So you've really got room for two lanes. The thought is that, you know, if somebody with a trailer, uh, they may pull in and, and park along this edge here. Mm -hmm. This zone in here is, is actually designated as the service or loading area. So that's, again, that, that gives us another 10 feet or so in here of width. So the parking over here is from, from the back of the parking to the building in this zone here, it's probably like 35 feet or so. So there should be room for somebody to pull in and park here with a trailer, pull up and park here with a trailer, and still maintain pretty safe egress in and around because it's a one-way loop. It's not like you're, you're trying to kind of jockey with people going both directions. Right. Okay. And then how about on 77 and um, nearby? Is parking allowed there, temporary parking? I don't think so, but um, no, I don't know. I guess that's really up there. Certainly not on Davis, right, Rob? Even if people were to park on 77, you need to meet your parking requirement off the road. Mm -hmm. So if you could put something on Route 77, it's not going to help you with your approval. Right, yeah. I, I understand that. I'm just curious for right. the sake of so, the larger vehicles. Yes. While we're on parking, I'm a little confused. You have marked 15 spaces in the back, and it's nine, actually. So I don't know why that says 15 unless, see, one, five spaces. 15, it's also on our plans here. And I well, count you know what, I'll, maybe that, I'll tell you, maybe it's 15 for both of those together. Oh, you mean for that and the other one? Well, that's confusing yeah. to me, and I think Yeah, I think you're that. right. And the other thing is, if you're planning on having, at least from my perspective, the ability for larger trucks to park, somebody that comes in with a, you know, a workman with a truck, that maybe it would be important to de to mark those somehow or other that they can park there. We so could, they don't end up pulling in and taking or sure. okay, three or four spaces yeah. from somebody else yeah. and creating a problem. I mean, they're, they're typically, when, when a truck with a trailer on it pulls in, he's not going to pull into one of these kind of... Per perpendicular park. Pull in sideways, though, and take up three spaces. Oh. So it would be prudent to mark them. But there is a total. I, I know that that's probably a typo on there, and it was probably left over from. If you remember at the workshop, we had all of that parking in one long sure. kind of. Yeah, well, just clean it up. Kind of all. band there, and there was a discussion about about having to break that up. There's something in the ordinance about you can't have more than 10 spaces without having a landscape island. Mm -hmm. So that's when we, we kind of played around with breaking it up a little bit there. Um, so the outdoor dining um, will accommodate about 30, 30 seats is what, what's planned. And then indoors, there'll be, um, I think, up to 50 seats in the summertime. and. Um, 80 seats in the winter. I'll show you here. This is a floor plan showing kind of the ex expansion off the back here, and the total reconfiguration of the of the interior of the building. Although the the uh, this is different from what you submitted. It is different. Just want to make sure. I yeah, I guess I should clarify that. He's revised it. We have revised the plans from what was submitted. Um, I think the, the original one was a little kind of uh, ambitious, to say the least. Um, so there's, there's no longer a second story with a meeting room or multi-use. It's, it's all happening on the first floor. So the second floor will just be a loft area that will be a, an office and some storage. Uh, so there's no seating plan for the upstairs, no use, public use plan for the upstairs at all. And. Um, so the, the interior is, is fairly close to what, what was originally uh, submitted, but it's been toned down as far as the, the uh, location of booths and tables and so forth. 
Um, and this is this shows about in the summertime. This shows 28 seating outside. I think you know ultimately it'll it'll be somewhere in that neighborhood, whether it's 28 or 30 or 32. But there will be a cap on 80 seats total. <clears throat> and then. Um, In the winter time, they'll just add more seats into in the in both sides here in order to to accommodate. So these will all be movable seats that'll be stored upstairs. That's part of what the uh, the upstairs loft is going to get used for is is uh, storing that. This is the kitchen back here. Uh, this is a kind of a counter seating here, some counter seating here. These would be booths, and these would be kind of movable tables. Uh, small little seating area over here. Um, so this says 70 seats. I think ultimately it's, you know, we're still looking at 80 seats year round. So um, in the summertime, it'll be split between in, inside and outside. But um, mm -hmm. quick, two quick questions. That seating for 20, how does that work in the middle? I saw those it are, Those are booths. Oh, these are boots. Yeah, so there'll be uh, oh, okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think, you know, two or three people on each. Okay, that's on fine. Each seat. And um, because the plan you submitted shows more than 80 seats on. Yeah, the plan we submitted. The uh, guy that uh, drew the floor plans just got kind of crazy with drawing tables and. I stuff. mean, outside there were. 48 seats. Yeah, I know. Um, That's what I mean. And the other thing is, how long is it anticipated the outside will be open? Two months, three months? I would, I don't know, Mary. I mean, two or three months? Could be. From, it's pretty uh, cold out in June by through September. I mean, we get some nice days in October even. Not after six, but okay. <laughs> it is on the south side. So. Other people. So, so I have a question related to that because it seems that for the neighbors um, and also for the ordinance, you know, the number of seats is important, mm -hmm. the capacity, and um, it seems like there could be a gray area where you have the winter configuration on the inside, but then the possibility to seat 28 people outside. Um, how does Rudy's plan to manage the, the capacity? Will there be one of two setups, the, the summer setup? or the win winter setup, or h how do you, will you govern that? Okay. Well, I think ultimately it's an enforcement issue with, uh, with your code officer. Um, if somebody comes in there and, and sees that there's more seats set up than, than what's approved for, they can call Bruce, and Bruce will come down and kind of shut them down. But, um, and so the restaurant won't be set up for more than 80 seats at a no, time? No, no. I think that's part of the commitment that, uh, that they're making. Is that something that, Maureen, we could specify in the plans? No. That there's either a winter configuration or a summer configuration? Well, it, it's and, a, I mean, you, can, I mean, you can either say that the, that the applicant has to commit to one configuration for one part of the year and the other configuration for the other part of the year, or you could put a condition on it that says at no point can they have more than 80 seats available. I mean, it, it's how you want to handle it. Yeah, I, I think it'd be nice to have some flexibility on, on how. I, I think we should yeah. limit the number of seats, you know, yeah. not a plan. The merits too much. This is on for completeness. I know. So. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but but I, in I mean, terms of thinking about how you're going to deal with it, no, I would rather not because if it rains for four nights, or four weeks, or four right. weeks, <laughs> yeah. you're going to want to use <laughs> indoor right. seating, well, I, even if it's I mean, June or July. Right. We right. don't want to micromanage, but we also want to. No, that's Take appropriate. Consideration no. and concerns. So I think you should think that through and how you're going to present it. Okay. But I certainly wouldn't want to see you have to have a summer plan and a winter plan. I'm not sure that's a good solution. So this is this is a series of elevations that show how the building would get renovated. And this so is a different. From this is definitely different because uh, the other elevations in your packet actually showed a two-story building with a full second floor over the top. And so we're going back to pretty much the massing that's out there now, with the exception of there is going to be that addition off the back. But that'll be a one-story addition. And the area above the, the main part of Rudy's itself will be a loft area 
You can see the two dormers there. That'll just add a little bit more usable space up there. And uh, the idea is there'll, there'll be an office and some, some storage on that second level. But uh, that's pretty much it. But the whole front, you know, will get redone. I think these, these nice little eyebrow dormers add some character. There'll be a covered porch in the front here and uh, new windows. And, uh, you know, it's, it, I think it's a pretty attractive uh, building that uh, will really kind of add to the, to the neighborhood. This is uh, from the south side. This just shows the, uh, the fencing around the outdoor dining area. The intent there is that that really is a pretty private uh, outdoor area. It's not, you know, it's not open to uh, visibility from Route 77 or or the neighborhood. So that um, it's it's quite contained there. The other two sides, again, this is you know this is looking at it from the from the uh, Davis Point Road side. Uh, you know there is it's a pretty functional. Uh, floor plan inside, so there's not much need for windows or fenestration on this side. And the same on the back, this would be the service entrance here, and there would be a back door that would uh, allow customers that are parking in the, in the parking lot in the rear here to, to enter the building here. So I think with that, I guess uh, our presentation is, is complete and uh, I think we're hopeful that you're going to find the application complete and we'll take the next steps beyond that. All set. Any uh, questions of the board on completeness? All right, motion for the board to consider. Um, motion for completeness. Completeness. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Two Lights General Store LLC for site plan review of Rudy's on the Cape, an 80 seat restaurant located at 517 Ocean House Road, be deemed complete. Second. Uh, motion having been made by Eliza Quinn and seconded by Beth Richardson. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? All opposed? Motion carries. Seven nothing. Uh, before we table a site, we want a site a site walk. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a very good idea. Yes. Sunday morning. <laughs> Not at seven thirty. Not at seven thirty. <laughs> Seriously, Ab, I just proposed that because it seems like a good time to. Or evening. I want it to be daylight. Yeah, daylight would be. I think we need a weekend day would be great. I think we need to see it. So we want to propose a time. Eleven, Sunday. That's a date. That's the twenty-first. It's a Sunday. No. Yeah, that's Janet. How about the? I'll put to the suggestion Saturday morning. Either's fine. Twenty eighth. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty eighth. I I can't make this Sunday. I can't make this Sunday. Twenty eighth. Sunday morning. Well, Sunday. later in the morning. Good. Eleven. Twenty eighth. Does that work for you? Twenty eighth. I think you should. Does that, yeah. does that work? Twenty eighth. Yeah. Twenty eighth is fine. What time? Eleven. Eleven. Someone bring the coffee. <laughs> you could buy it. That would be a, maybe a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> Better bring it. I don't think they're open. <laughs> okay, 28th at 11 o'clock in the morning. Is that, is that okay with you? That works for me. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. I, I have one quick question to ask, and Maureen, you can respond to this. I notice um, levels of candlelight. Does that have to do with yeah. the wattage? I know only with a residential neighborhood next door or what? Because I, on the road, it's greater than half a candle foot. I know it's they got a little adjusting to do. I think. 
Okay. Now, the, the standard in the site plan ordinance says 0.5 foot candles at the property line. Okay. Because so, if a number of them exceed that. I'm sure that Mr. Carroll can make that can work. Can adjust that. Okay. Is that, is that part of the ordinance even on a, on a highway? Really? Because part of the reason for those lights being there is really to kind of light those intersections. I mean, you'd think that Point five some light, some set light the spilling off of the, uh, you know, out towards towards the actual intersection would be. Well, kind of you deal with Maureen on, okay. it, on that. It, they have no, <laughs> they have no flexibility on that. It's a black and white standard. Okay. We can make that work. Can you can you tell me about uh, next step after the site walk is? I mean. <laughs> Well, do you, do you uh, schedule a public hearing now, or that, that's the next okay. Uh, okay. step? It's just okay. the. Um, I assume we want a public hearing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, we so we need it multiple ahead. Uh, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Two Lights General Store LLC for site plan review of Rudy's on the Cape, an 80-seat restaurant located at 517 Ocean House Road, be tabled to the March 16, 2010 meeting, at which time a public hearing will be held. Okay. Second. Motion having been made by Beth Richardson and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Motion carries seven nothing. We'll see Thank you. On you. That. We'll see you March 16th. We'll see you on the 28th. February 28th. May, may I add something sure. too, please? Um, I'd like to invite all the neighbors and anybody who's listening that you're welcome to come on the sidewalk. It's encouraged. It's encouraged. Thank you. When is the sidewalk? 28th. Sunday, Sunday the 28th Sunday at 11 o'clock. Sunday the 28th. Interrupt my New York Sunday. Times. 11 a.m. <laughs> It will also be posted on the calendar on the town's website. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you, if you could just step up. You, you can send an email directly to me. But that's also not being posted anymore on the... It's not being posted, but it's, there's no legal requirement that emails be posted. The legal requirement is that the planning board receive them. And if and you send available. the email to me, I will make sure the board gets it, and a copy of the email will go into the town's public file. The public hearing those also so the public can hear the, the voice of the public. So if I'm not going to be here, I'm going to be out of town, and it's not going to be posted on the email. Send, they send can it. come to the office, and they can read the file. Perhaps you could send a representative to read a letter of yours? I'll give that a shot. Is that fair? Could you identify yourself for the record, please? Patrick Babcock. Street address? 503 Ocean House Road. Just to the right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else has any other questions on the project, please feel free to call Maureen. Next uh, item on our agenda is the agricultural amendments. And I'm going to invite the town planner to introduce them. So we have to you, want a, you want a brief introduction? Very brief. Very brief. <laughs> Very brief. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> Two minutes worth. <laughs> Too bad. It's late. No, that's true. I think we're doing so We were later. 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 We were I thought it was some wrap. It is not. Hmm? Frustrating. Oh, that is, let's see. I was looking at my copy at home. That is, it's a definition of the farm market. There we go, two six, maybe. I'd like to adjust that. What time did you try to come in? What time did you try to come in and it was locked? It's right here Good. on page two. Was it locked? 
We were having a discussion at dinner the other night about a piggery. Participatory democracy. <laughs> Somebody was saying. <laughs> All right. As soon as, you, as soon as you're ready. I think I could. Please. Okay. Everybody thought I was nuts until there was a real street developer. So uh, the town adopted a new excuse, comprehensive. Excuse us, uh, Pat. Thank you. A new comprehensive plan in 2007, it included 33 high priority recommendations. Those were broken down into five different ordinance amendment packages. Uh, and the planning board was asked by the town council to process those as quickly as you could. Uh, you've already done the BA uh, overhaul and the shoreland zoning. And the third package was the agricultural amendments. Uh, there was a goal in the comprehensive plan that talked about uh, providing more flexibility in the town zoning ordinance, uh, one, to develop an agricultural profile, and two, to identify and modify town regulations that hamper the flexibility needed to make farming economically viable. Uh, the review of the zoning ordinance should include, at a minimum, the minimum lot sizes for fish and farm markets, temporary buildings needed for worker housing, agriculture-related accessory buildings and uses, agriculture definition, agriculturally-related product, products and uses, and restrictions on the percentage of non-farm or non-local produce that may be sold in farm markets. So what the Planning Board has done is they've uh, looked at the comprehensive plan recommendations. They've also worked with a uh, fairly extensive report that was created by the Cape Farm Alliance, which uh, developed the agricultural profile and put together a set of amendments that are intended to uh, modify the current zoning to make it, uh, make it easier for farmers to have flexibility and uh, variety in the ways that they make a living. So I'd be happy to go over the specifics, but basically the things I've just talked about are, are, how, are what these amendments embody. Any questions? I can do more, but... No, no. <laughs> no, I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> is, this, is this the second public that's hearing? Right. No, no, no. This is no, the no, first. This will be the first. Maybe the last. All right. <laughs> it feels like any, any, anyone else from the board want to add anything to Maureen's comments? Hearing none, what I'd like to do is open the public hearing and invite anyone wishing to step up to the podium. Don't feel obligated, but if you'd like to <laughs> say a few words. <laughs> I am one of the owners of Jordan's Farm in Cape Elizabeth and as chair of the Cape Farm Alliance. Um, I would like to thank you all for all of the thought, the time, and the consideration you've given to the ordinances that we put forward. Um, I truly believe that uh, Cape Elizabeth demonstrates what many other communities across the state would hope that their planning boards, their council, and their citizens would demonstrate through action. Um, I'll tell you as I travel across the state uh, over the last uh, couple of months, we're held up as an example of people who truly demonstrate a commitment to agriculture and your community. And I think uh, many people could think that as an oxymoron in Cape Elizabeth. Um, but I truly believe that we're lucky to live in a community that values agriculture as a business and as a viable industry. And I thank you for everything that you've done to not only value the existing agriculture, but the emerging agriculture that happens within our community. And um, I just, I don't, I, I don't think you truly understand that uh, we, we, the farmers and the Cape Farm Alliance know how much time it took for us to put forward these ordinances, and um, I really value all of the time that you've put into this, so thank you very, very much. And um, I'm proud to continually say, as I travel across the state, that I live in Cape Elizabeth, and we demonstrate the value of agriculture. So thank you, thank you very much. Nope. 
Any other, anyone else wishing to speak concerning the uh, proposed changes to the agricultural ordinance? Hearing none, I'd like to close the public hearing. Open the floor up to uh, questions, comments, thoughts, or suggestions from the board. Kind of hashed this through several times, so I'm seeing Barbara wants to make a motion. No, well, I want to make a comment, actually. I think Beth is going to make the same comment. We had a, a letter from Jay Cox, yes. and we don't have an overwhelming number of farmers here anymore, so I think that what any, any farmer says we need to take seriously and try to help that person make the best of what they're trying to do. And his business, he, he would like to tr us to consider rewording a little bit so that space outside, this has to do with the definition of farm market, that space outside and adjacent to the farm market used to display products demonstrably unsuitable for inside display may be considered total building floor area devoted to retail sales for the purpose of this calculation, the 50% calculation. No, I certainly don't have any problem with that. Do we want to get rid of the whole size thing? I mean, because there's a, some other kind of farm product that's going to come up that, or is that getting too broad? That, that would be my concern. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. You know, we didn't think about it. And probably when Jay was there, he didn't think about it. I think he was there one time, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. So what else are we missing that made somebody want to? Well, I, I don't know. I, 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 I hesitate to come up with something too broad. Certainly if this is step one, and step two is now we've got to go to the town council and get it through that. And we've put a lot of work into ordinances before and then hit out either a stone wall or some grease skids. But the important point is, is also number two, which is if it doesn't work or it needs to be tweaked, you know, we pass it, we implement it. A year from now, if something's not working, we come right back and we try to fix it, in my view, Jim. Yeah. In I my view, it. I don't agree. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> no, I think we need to send to the town council, and we can do it tonight just by putting a little. No, I have no trouble with Jay's. I'm um, I, I, oh, no, no, in general, I think we just, I would like to try to deal with this one thing. Because I, I think all the farmers have thought very hard about what works and what doesn't and have discussed it, and this one little thing is now brought up before us. And I think we need to incorporate it, if we all agree to into the ordinance we send to the town council so that we have what we think is the best recommendation we can possibly make. I wasn't suggesting yeah. we don't. Okay. <laughs> I agree and um, I'd like to propose some wording. Okay. Good. Okay. Where are we? So definition of a farm market on page two starting with line six. Farm market. A farm market is operated for the purpose of selling raw or shelf stable products produced from, agri pro for, produced from agricultural products grown on land within Cape Elizabeth. So, so far, no change. And this is where I would change it. A maximum of 50% of the display area devoted to retail sales may be dedicated to related products. And then strike the rest of the sentence. And then the 50% maximum shall be averaged annually. So there, we just have a broad category of display area. So 50% of essentially the products on display. And that's the 50, that's have related, to be related products. He can have no related products. And, I mean, that's, that's a maximum of related products. Okay. I'm just thinking out yeah, loud. Yeah, right. Just mm -hmm. thinking out loud. Yep. Mm -hmm. So no more than 50% of the products. Related from, products. Yeah. Not, not what he Not be there. farm products. Right. Well, she's just changing total floor area to display area. Which yep, and then sort of striking the uh, shall not preclude yep. the outside the building stuff. Do we think Jay's going to have a lot of wreaths out there that would change his, well, because he, he doesn't make the wreaths. Um, I, I don't know. Well, his trees, will, his trees will all be displayed outside of the building. Yeah. 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 His point was, he, he may, he, you know, the stuff he has inside might yeah. not be farm products. They might be tree stands or something. I can read it again. Yeah, read that read last one more time. Just that, that I think it was okay. Yeah. So a maximum of 50% of the display area. Of the total display area. Of the total display area. Okay, right. I'm going to start again. 
Um, a maximum of 50% of the total display area devoted to retail sales may be dedicated to related market products. The 50% maximum shall be averaged annually. Sounds good. It does. Okay. Do we want to work his in there? It shall not preclude. I don't know. What does that get us? Yeah. I would yeah. keep it just because I don't know if a code officer is going to assume that total display area is only inside the building. Yeah, that, that directs the code officer that outside is display area, too. So I, I, I think, think that it, probably. I don't, I don't think, think that's a problem. I think it adds anything, but I don't think it subtracts anything. No, I don't yeah. either. I think it's fine. So we'll leave that in. Okay. okay. Some clarification, I think. All right. You'll leave what in there? Yeah. The which shall not preclude the display of products okay. outside, outside the building. Okay. I'm not sure it gets us anywhere, but I'll, it doesn't subtract from what Liza suggested. So just leave yeah. it in. Well, that makes it clear for the code officer that display area means inside and outside. So there's no question in, no question in his mind. So you just took out two words and put in Dis one. Put in two one. Words. One. Dis <laughs> Total display area. Took Remove out building, building floor area. Building area and replaced it with display area. Yeah. All right. Work for me. Well done. Very efficient use of words. There we go. May I make a motion? Sure. Uh, be it ordered that based on the draft amendments and the facts presented, the agricultural amendments be recommended to the town council for consideration. Second. Barbara. Second. Mm -hmm. A motion having been made by uh, Beth Richardson and seconded by Barbara Schenkel. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? All opposed to the motion? I hear a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Move. All in favor? We're adjourned. Yes, Yay, adjourned. we're going to move these on. Yeah. Wow. So we can tackle the hidden use. No way. Is that your first one? Oh, that was the bitter. Is your first one? No, no, no. Oh, lost. I was going to say, what is that? No, it's the Olympics. It was the cross-country Do you already know the outcome? No. No? I like the biathlon. Do you know the outcome? I'm still sick. I used to do biathlon. Really? That's a tough, tough one. That's a very different one. Yes. Yes. Did you hear the